This is JP, a really nice guy who twice looked across to his girlfriend, I think to say, please help me, get me out of this. But he stayed, for which I was very grateful, and he said something quite amazing at the end. JP, do you think there's an afterlife? I think there's a possibility. I don't know. I, I, I don't believe that it all just ends here, you know? Do you think about it much? Actually, I do. Um, not, not in terms of afterlife, but I, I think about death a lot. I don't know if that's like kind of weird. You're afraid of dying. Um, I think it's, it's hard not to be, you know, because I don't want to die right now, obviously. Do you believe in God's existence? Uh, I do. I'm not religious about it, but I believe there's a higher power. Do you know what the cause of death is? Now I'm talking biblically. Do you know what the Bible says causes death? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. Do you, can you yeah, enlighten The Bible says they're wages. Sorry, say again. Wages. Wages. Yeah, you've earned death. God okay. says you earn death. He says the soul that sends it will die. In other words, you're like a criminal who's under the death sentence waiting to die, and he's earned his death sentence. That's interesting. It is interesting. And the Bible actually calls death an enemy. Did you know that? Wow. Yeah. And what do you think about the Bible's claims? Uh, which one? The, the first of the Old Testament? The Old Testament was basically God promising to destroy man's greatest enemy, death, and the New Testament tells us how he did it. Oh, do you think you've earned your wages? Gosh, I don't even know, but, but, but going back to that, when, you, when you're saying that uh, immortality, I guess, do you, would, you, would you take that in the physical sense or in the meaning of the afterlife? Physical sense. Physical sense, okay. I don't want to be a spook on a cloud playing a rusty harp for eternity. It's a physical body that I want forever. So, let's go back to the wages to see if you earn them. Do you think you're a good person, JP? Uh, relatively speaking, yeah. I mean, we all have flaws, right? <laughs> How many lies have you told in your life? Too many to track. <laughs> have you ever stolen something? Have I stolen something? I have in the past, actually, yeah. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yeah. It's called blasphemy. It's real serious. Punishable by death in the Old Testament. Now, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I mean, yeah. So, JP, I'm not judging you. This is, this is uncomfortable. But stay with me, because to understand good news, you've got to hear a little bad news. So, JP, by your own admission, I'm not judging you. You're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. You've earned your wages. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments from a standpoint of moral perfection, you're going to be innocent or guilty. I, I'm not God. I can make the call. <laughs> yes, you can. You're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and a daughter. Nah, you can make the call. You'll be guilty like the rest of us. Uh, I, I feel like this is it's too black and white, you know? It's the, you either did all this stuff or you didn't, and it's like you, you're innocent or you're guilty. You know, I think, I think it's a little more gray, you know? So you want God to judge on a curve? You won't even get that in a court of law. No, yeah. The judge is a black and white. It's a dichotomy if you're innocent or guilty. What do you plead? Innocent or guilty? I see. I definitely see where you're coming from, for sure. Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we post two new encouraging videos every single day. We also have many more resources available on livingwaters.com. Thank you so much. But I think there's a there's a sense of forgiveness for yourself and for others that. Um, you're right, but you, you know, we haven't got to that point yet. Okay. Yeah. So let me just. I'll be frank with you. You'll be guilty like the rest of us. And the Bible says all liars are their part in the lake of fire. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, the scriptures say. Thieves are not here at God's kingdom, so you're in big trouble. Now, do you know what God did for guilty sinners so he could extend his mercy towards us? Do you know what he did? He died on the cross. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, even though you're guilty, the judge can let you go. And God can commute your death sentence. He can let you live forever. He can dismiss your case because your fine was paid by another 2,000 years ago on that cross. That's what happened. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And now God offers you everlasting life as a free gift. At the moment, you're like a man on a plane 10,000 feet up. He knows he's going to have to jump, but he's thinking of saving himself by flapping his arms. And I'd say to him, no, 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 grab the parachute. And that's what I'm saying. Don't trust your goodness to save you. Transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the minute you do that, JP, God will forgive every sin you've ever committed and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Does what I'm saying make sense? Uh, it definitely does. Um, definitely. So, Sal, if you were to die today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. There are two things you have to do to be saved. You must repent and trust alone in Jesus. When are you going to do that? I like to say that every night I have to try to say, look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not perfect, I'm human, I make mistakes, and, you know. Well, let's back up here. At the moment, you're unsaved. Basically, um, 
just uh, surrender yourself to him, you know? Yeah. Trust in the Savior. Do you have a Bible at home? I do. So thanks for talking to me. I, I love you, I care about you, and that's why I'm sharing this with you. So I appreciate you listening to me. Oh, thank you. So I thanks for your patience. I know you wanted to get away, but will you please think about this and think about my motive? Why would I talk to you like this? It's only because I love you, I care about you, and where you spend eternity. So will you think about it? Um, I, really, I really appreciate everything that you've been telling me. I've definitely learned a lot, and it's uh, given me a whole new perspective. And um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely things that I didn't know that now I do know because of this, and I really appreciate you. Do you have a Bible at home? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Please dig it out. And thanks for your patience. Appreciate you talking to me. For sure. Thank you so much. Have a good one.